Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're just going to do a little video now about this uh, Hi-Fi Audio Amplifier. And one of the reasons why I'm bringing your attention to it is because a lot of people are going to get fooled with things like this. Uh, hopefully none of my viewers will be fooled on something like this, but a lot of people will be. And uh, they're going to look at things like this, this number, this, um, this car, 180 watt times 2 power digital amplifier. Hi-Fi, MIDI, Stereo, Audio, Amp, USB, FM, Mic, Home. Um, I don't know what the uh, FM part is. and I presume, well, well, we'll go through that in a second. And it's got a whole bunch of pictures. It's got some dimensions there and a lovely uh, lovely LED that glows in the background. Yeah, some, some pictures. Uh, if you note on this picture, it says BTL, which is a bridge tide load which means it's a, um, if you imagine two mono amplifiers being pulled, being put side by side, uh, the two negatives being used as a ground and then the two positives being used in a push-pull configuration on the speaker. That's an example of a BTL. It's not the only example, but that's just an example. Okay, so, um, yeah, so there's not much more to go on, but there are some interesting things about it. Um, one of the things here, like it says, it's 180 watts times 2. Now, this whole watt thing and numbers with watts can be um, quite, for the people who don't know, can be quite a... Um, they look at that and they think, wow, 180 watts. Oh, times 2, is that the two speakers? 180 watts each on this amplifier, that's great. But this isn't really what this means, and I don't think that this is, uh, this is just, I mean, this is just complete BS. And what we're going to do is, uh, we're just going to look down this for a second, you get to look here. We're going to look here, and then we're going to see where it says item specifics, and it says the power is 20 watts plus 20 watts. Okay, so that's the difference to start off with. Uh, it has a distortion rate of 0.01%. Signal to noise ratio of 90 dB. Uh, feature, high fidelity, high fi uh, And then we're gonna look across here. We're gonna look at the input voltage here because this says quite a lot. The input voltage here is 12 volts. We got load impedance between four and 16 ohms. And we got our frequency of 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, standard on the amplifier. And then we got the max power. And the max power on these can be that in, if, at any moment, and depending on what you consider a moment, but it can be the shortest period of time, there could be a time where the amplifier, by that moment and that moment only, could reach a lot higher maximum output. It's very easy to see how they can play with these numbers, but what they do is, to be naughty, is trickery, is they just try to advertise it like that, knowing that if you go down here, or don't go down here, because you might just look at the top part, you'll see a 20 watt put 20 watt. And it doesn't tell you whether it's a PMPO or PMOP. Uh, them two can be interchanged, or RMS, which is what we normally use. So what we're gonna do now, is because I've actually bought this, we're going to take a peek at it and we're going to take it apart, we're going to look inside and we're going to see exactly what this thing is all about. This device is not going to be able to output any more power than what it can draw in. So we can look at this and say it's 12 volts. 12 volts, 2 amps, 12 volts, 2 amps, 2 5 amps. So it's possible it runs up 2 amps and it can draw up to 5 amps. So let's just look at it as the 2 amp first for some easy maths to work out what this can be putting out just by, you know, um, just thinking off the top of the head. So 12 volts times 2 for 2 amps. That's 24 watts. Yeah, that's 24, which, would, which equals 24 watts. So there's absolutely no way that we're going to be talking 400 watts, especially if we're talking 400 watt RMS, the normal sort of thing. When people think about wattage, they don't think about all these other non really defined, uh, institutionalized, or uh, standardized PMPOs or PMOPs or anything like that. They, they think RMS. 
And if we looked at it at its best, we can see 12 times five there, which quick working out is like 60. So the maximum power that can be drawn into this system is 60 watts. And that's probably, you know, well, whether that's true or not, we don't know. But what we're gonna do now then is we're gonna leave that alone and we're gonna come into this box. I'm gonna tell you straight away, I think that that's uh, the only honest part about this really is uh, open from here. But let's pull it open. Now I did think I was gonna do a bit of an unboxing this, but I actually thought when it came through the post, it was my medication, uh, but it's not. So let's just pull this out. Okay, I'm struggling with the box. Let's, let's get rid of that. I'm trying to get the box at a better angle to get it out more tilt. There you go. Nothing wrong with the box. The box works fine. And so here we have it. This little tiny thing. I mean, it's not much bigger. It's no bigger than it fits in the palm of my hand. Um, interesting thing is about this uh, bridge tide load. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on inside here. Uh, that does happen, we've got a pretend equaliser thing going on there. We've got our audio input. I don't know about the radio side of things. We've got treble, we've got bass. Bit of a rough feeling of volume control. And a nice pushy on and off switch. I do like those. That that looks like it's got something tied to it. Mm, I wonder if that's something to do with the heat sink. But anyway, let's bust into this thing. Uh, Alrighty ho. Uh, looking in there. It looks a bit suspect, a bit of a of a heat, heat shrink, a heat shield, a heat sink. Even, let's get that off there then. Okay. And that's all she wrote. Well, there's a bit of a Thermal coupling paste there. That's nice. Yep, a little tiny bit of thermal coupling paste, that's all. And this is what we got inside then. All right. Okay. Uh... Oops, don't want to do that too much, do I? Come on, you off. This isn't probably the best way of going about doing this. I might break it, but there we go. Uh, let's have a look what we got going on down here. Put on to one time, see if we can see anything. I'm looking through the camera myself. What if I just touch this? Whether it will. Nope, we got three times then. Oh, we got a part number. Hey, Taiwan. Great stuff it's made in Taiwan. I want to get this thing to stay in focus. We've got a TDA 7057AQ. All right. What's that on there? <laughs> nice big splodge of solder on the side of that. That's always nice. And just looking at the inside of this here, HY. 2078C. We've got all um, carbon resistors in there. Oh, we've got a piece of wire tying these parts together. No, I'm not even going to suggest that I can break down the circuit for you, but I pretty much guarantee this is the uh, the amplifier side of things. And uh, it is probably the, the, the bridge 
amplifier but I'm going to say just off the top of my head there's no way this thing is going to be doing 400 watts or even the 20 watts I wouldn't have thought so just looking at the side of it the size of it and the size of the heat sink on there that's not, not really made for dissipating that amount of power and even going on to this little flimsy case uh, again yeah, I mean 20 watts, you're yeah, going to get quite a bit of warmth from that. Okay, right, well what we're going to do then is we're going to look up what that is. So let's have a little look down. Alright, well straight away, two, point, 2 times 8 watt. Stereo, bridge tight load, BTL, audio output amplifier with DC volume control. We're going to supply voltage. Uh, what we got here for our features, DC volume control, few external components, mute mode, thermal protection, short circuit proof, no switch on and switch off clicks, good overall stability, low power consumption, low HF radiation, ESD projected, protected on all pins. All right, well that's good. The ESD is the static. So our uh, voltage supply is between 4.5 and 18 volts that's great they say 12 volt a lot of people got 12 volt adapters whether it be for your routers whatever you still use it uh, the voltage gain um, 40 db 39 41 so around about 40 db voltage gain control yeah we don't need to be bothered about that too much total harmonic distortion uh, power out equals 0.5 watts, typical 0.3. And what did we see on that advert? Did it say that the power output distortion was? Just to recap here. Oh, that's right, the distortion rate. 0.01%. So that's a crack of uh, how you doing. Um, that's the inside block diagram. There's our pin out. I'm not going to bother following the pin out through anything like this. All I wanted to sort of show was this thing isn't going to do what it's, what it says it's going to do. At least what the advert says it's going to do. So I just want to look and see what sort of current we can put through this thing. Well, the total power dissipation on this, and that's total. Um, uh, and that's with the, uh, the thermostat in the case, less than 60C, is 22.5 watts. So we're not anywhere near, I don't know how you do any sort of sums, I don't suppose, unless, you know, yeah, yeah, power dissipation, assume VP equals 12 volts, right, so that's the voltage equals 12 volts, and the load equals 16 ohms, which is the, the least current consuming load 16 ohms the maximum sine wave dissipation is two times 1.8 watts <laughs> equaling 3.6 watts so there's no way on this earth that this is going to be able to de de deal with 400 watts and i don't think it's well it's not going to do 20 watts per channel either uh, so looks at eight times, right? THD equals ten percent of the resistive load of its eight times uh, at five point three watts. That's ten percent THD. Total harmonic distortion, zero point five watts. It says yeah, yeah, zero point three. Maximum one percent, and that's at zero point five watts. Like, All right? That's not that's not running. That's not doing like, you know, what I've shown in some videos. You run it until it clips and then you back it off so it's not clipping anymore on the sine wave. And you can do your calculations on there on what you want to use. But you can't have it clipping. You can't have any distortion as such. Certainly not clipping. Okay, well, I don't think we need to go through this anymore. We don't need to go through any of this. Though it even says here, look, two times eight watt stereo BTL audio output amplifier with DC volume control. So even written in here, look, we got uh, where is it? So yeah, we got twelve watts, three amps. So that's basically thirty-six watts. Yep. 
and you're not going to get 36 watts out of it you put 36 watts into it you're going to lose some because the circuit all this wants some energy for itself to use it and then you're going to have temperature when you're going to be losing power as the temperature rises on the chip uh, yeah, yeah 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 rms look 20 watts plus 20 watts out of power there you go be old lie manufactured lie difference between the one down the the one at the top there uh, and the one at the top is you've got an auxiliary in on the top. I don't know what it's like on the back, but that's the AK270, AK and this is the AK170. There you go, guys. Quick little thing on that. Just, uh, you know, don't get blindsided. Don't get fooled by these things when they put out that it's uh, all this watts. It's, um, it's most certainly not, especially if the components inside are just nowhere near capable enough to do that job. All right, cheers for watching and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.